All right, David Harry here. And in this video, I'm going to be testing the combination of the Samsung Galaxy S21 smartphone and also the Rode VideoMic NTG microphone, just to see what this combination is going to be like as possibly one of the best options that you've got to hand for vlogging using a smartphone. Okay, so what I've got here then is undoubtedly one of the latest flagship smartphones, which you would expect to be pretty good with its cameras and stuff. And so obviously right now I'm on the front camera here and I'm also subject to the EIS or the electronic image stabilization that this phone does as well. And I have to say, I'm very, very happy with the stabilization on this particular phone. For a phone, I think the stabilization is absolutely fantastic. And I think when you put it up against other stuff as well i think it really does hold itself really well even against gopros eights and nines and stuff like that and then obviously what i'm matching and pairing it up with is arguably one of the best vlogger microphones you can buy as well which is obviously the rode video mic ntg so yes then on paper i am using two things which on their own are probably like pinnacles in their fields however what are they like once they're put together into a system which I'm hoping is going to be one of the best options that you can have for doing mobile phone vlogging. And I'm very particular in saying mobile phone vlogging. One, obviously because it's a mobile phone, it's not a DSLR or a mirrorless or a GoPro, but on the point of GoPro, my preferred vlogging device is the GoPro, especially the Hero 8. I've got a Hero 9, but I do actually prefer the Hero 8 more. So as far as phones are concerned, hopefully, this is going to be a very good option because a lot of people don't like to use, say, mirrorless or DSLRs or even small GoPros. What a lot of people like to do is to use something that they've got on them all the time. And undoubtedly, a phone is something you have on you all the time. Now, the sharp-minded of you out there who are not the types to be easily succumb to the Jedi mind trick will obviously be sitting there going, hold on a minute, Dave, you're talking about using a phone which yes is very conveniently in your pocket most of the time but who on earth walks around with a road video mic ntg spare in their pocket all of the time obviously the answer to that is not many people are going to do that however for those instances where you want to do say fancy posh vlogging where you've deliberately thought about going out to do a vlog in which case you will kind of tool up a bit to do that so not so much off the cuff as you would do just by picking your phone up and going for it but in particular instances where you're thinking do you know what I, i'm going to go out today and i'm going to do a vlog about x amount of things or x something in that instance there's a fair old chance that you may tool up a little bit more and use an external microphone so in that particular instance then yes you may have a road video mic ntg okay so to a couple of technical points then about this particular setup and i think the first point worth making here is that this microphone is a shotgun microphone so a shotgun microphone differs quite a lot from every other type of mic that you're likely to use it has a very focused front face and pattern and it also has other characteristics to do with its cardioid response as well or its polar pattern or pickup response in fact for anybody who's really interested in wanting to know what makes a shotgun mic a shotgun mic there'll be a link here to a video that i've done in the past explaining what is a shotgun mic basically in, sim in the simplest terms that i could possibly put it in <laughs> anyway so this is a shotgun mic so it exhibits certain characteristics but most notably a very focused front pickup pattern which i think when you're outdoors will really lend itself to vlogging now indoors they're still good although what happens because of the nature of their pickup pattern they have what is called a rear lobe characteristic which is basically almost like if you can think about another cardioid pattern but behind the microphone but it doesn't reach very far and it's and it's still quite narrow but in, nonetheless it does mean that the microphone will pick up things from behind it quite well if it's very close to the back of the mic hence why some people don't really like using shotguns indoors because of the reflections in rooms which are going to you know probably come back into the microphone from the rear so what i'm going to do shortly is do a cardioid turn test so we can get an idea of that and i'll also do something where hopefully i get by some traffic but 
But also, there's another point to make here about the way that this is connected, because this particular setup is all connected via a USB-C to USB-C cable. So, two things there. One, it is mega convenient. And two, what this means is that all the stuff that is going on in the microphone is being transferred to the phone through the microphone's conversion system. So anytime you go, say, from the real world with a microphone, which we call, say, analog, and we go into a phone or something or a digital recorder, we call that analog to digital conversion. And so with that being the case, then what's going on here is that the microphone isn't just being a microphone. It is also being an analog to digital converter and also highly likely to be a much better analog to digital converter than what the phone's got in it. So the microphone is now sending a digital signal down the USB-C cable to the phone. And then the phone isn't doing any of the legwork with the conversion. Now there are also provisions within USB-C for this type of setup for an analog signal to be sent down the cable. Although in this particular instance, I don't think that that's what's happening. Anyways, David, stop doing that really boring stuff and do that marginally less boring stuff instead as in the cardio pattern thing. So what I'm gonna do then is just stand still for a little while and do this cardioid pattern test. So what I'm gonna do is turn everything around, because don't forget, I'm using a pistol grip here with the phone on top and the mic on top of that. So when I turn one thing, everything's moving. So what I'm gonna do is turn the entire rig through 360 degrees and we'll check it at 90 degrees and 180 degrees off axis to me. And by that, what I mean is, Right now, the microphone is pointing straight at me, so I am completely in line with its cardioid pattern or the axis of its cardioid pattern. So therefore, I am at zero degrees as far as the axis of the cardioid direction is concerned to do with the microphone. Now what I'm going to do, oh, which by the way, I should be the loudest at this point. So what I'm going to do is turn it 90 degrees to one side. So that is now 90 degrees off axis to me or I'm 90 degrees off axis to the microphone. Actually, I say this, which one is off axis to the other? It's all relevant to one another, so nonetheless, it's 90 degrees. <laughs> Anyways, what we should have noticed is that I should have dropped off a bit there. There's probably a difference in tonality as well, and that is partly the effect of the cardioid response and what have you. Now what I'm going to do is turn it so it is 180 degrees off axis to me or i'm 180 degrees off axis to the mic whichever way you want to look at that however now rather than me getting quieter again as i would do with say a say a cardio microphone what we've probably noticed here is either one of two things or possibly both one i may have gotten a bit louder compared to the 90 degree axis or two I may actually sound a bit better than what I did on the 90 degree axis or three, both it might just be louder and sounds better. So it might sound a bit more fuller sound and better tone and stuff like that. So what we are hearing right now is the result of the rear lobe effect of a shotgun microphone, which we can definitely tell when I turn it to the other 90 degree axis there. So in a cardioid response with a cardioid microphone, this would have gotten louder but right now it may not have gotten louder or it just may not sound as good as what it did at the back which is very odd but then like i say that is the effect of the real lobe anyways back around to the front i'm so i'm now on axis zero degrees and this is the loudest that it's going to be so hopefully that wasn't dead uh, boring although it probably was but somewhere in there hopefully i've explained to you what the difference is between say a cardioid response from a typical cardioid microphone compared to the response from a shotgun microphone which although is a type of cardioid it is very specific and has certain characteristics such as that real lobe that i was talking about okay so what i'm going to do now is that thing where i go and stand by a road and hopefully have some traffic driving by just so that we can see what this microphone is going to be like a picking me up in a noisy environment by a road with a bunch of traffic now the thing is here this particular take that you're about to watch is going to be the last thing that I record. So it might have gotten a bit darker because the sun's starting to go down. So if you're sitting here going, wow, that Dave's magic. He can control the weather and make the sun go up and down at will. I can't really. It's just I'm shooting stuff out of sequence. So where I am now then, there is some traffic behind the microphone. But because the microphone is pointing towards me, I should be getting picked up more than the traffic. However, when I turn the mic around, 
I am now pointing the mic into the traffic. We should be picking up the traffic more and less of me. And then, when I turn it back around to myself again, hopefully we're picking me up more than the traffic. And now what I'm going to do is turn around with the mic and me facing towards the traffic. And although we are facing into the traffic with the microphone, because I am between the traffic and the microphone, hopefully we're still hearing me over the sound of the traffic. And then I will turn back around this way. And once again, we've got the traffic behind us. Okay, so I think that'll probably just about do it for this video then. And I've hopefully given people enough example here, which is probably an understatement of dialogue in order for you to get a gauge of what this combination's all about. So just to sum this up then, um, and I know I made a bit of a kind of meal of it at the beginning, maybe it might sound like a bit of a joke, but the bottom line here is this. This phone is brand new and therefore should be, you know, one of the best options as far as a phone is concerned for its cameras and also for vlogging. So right now I'm on its front camera, which is obviously the preferred one for vlogging. You could vlog with the rear cameras. I've already done that. In fact, there should be a video here or one in the description where I vlogged in 8K using its rear cameras. However, the most, you know, the most likely way anyone's going to use a phone like this is with the front camera so they can see themselves in the screen and stuff like that. So hopefully what we're seeing here is a really good result or a good example of what this phone is typically capable of. And I have to say, I've already done a few things with this now and I, I've got to say immediately, I am very, very happy. Um, as far as like you know the EIS is concerned on this phone it has absolutely stunned me in certain ways as well because I definitely wasn't expecting it from a smartphone and I'm used to using a GoPro Hero 9 or a Hero 8 as, as I've already said earlier in the video and with those two things they're definitely the best things going for electronic image stabilization however this phone seems to be great also as well I actually don't mind the picture on it. It, it, you know, it is in fully auto. You will have seen weird skin tones going on depending upon the angle of the sun and stuff like that. But for the best part, it being fully auto, and I think it deals with most things very well, especially for the vlog thing. It's also been focusing on me properly as well, um, or for the best part, it will have done. Now, th there will have been like, times where it may not have looked great or it could have looked a bit better with a certain thing however when you consider that this is fully automatic and to do vlogging effectively like this you have to be in auto you can't be going manual because you can't keep resetting things all the time i think it's doing a fantastic job and once again it is something that's likely to be in your pocket all the time now obviously what won't be in your pocket all the time is the likes of the microphone but like I'd already said, the reason for testing a mic like this is for those occasions where you're being a bit more serious or you're upping your game for a particular vlog where you simply need a proper microphone and at that a shotgun mic. So hopefully this has been like a really good example of what you can do with the Rode VideoMic NTG, which I have to say, and I've got to be dead honest here because I'm a massive Rode fanboy. Although the, end, the video mic NTG is not my favorite road mic. Um, I won't get into it too much in this video, but for someone like me who's got a loud voice, and this is a consideration for anyone looking at the video mic NTG, and I'm sorry to have to say this and I don't want to upset anyone at road, but the thing is, its SPL characteristics are not particularly great. And what that means is sound pressure level. I'm assuming it's sound pressure level or very, or in particular sound pressure level at particular frequencies, because what it is, I can overdrive the capsule on this microphone. And that's like something that you can't get rid of after it's happened. It's not like it's distorting because of the preamp. It's actually the capsule that's done it. So I do run into problems with that. So like I say, I don't wanna put a downer on any of this because right now you may not have heard anything and it may have all been great. However, you do have to be careful with the video mic NTG because of that thing to do with loudness. However, if you are not a big loud mad idiot like me, then you're so unlikely likely to be distorting the capsule of any microphone least of all this one so on that basis there will be links uh, in the descriptions below to this microphone also the phone as well and some of the bits and pieces the little grip system and all that so if you've liked the video then please give it a thumbs up also you may want to consider subscribing to my channel and getting all over that bell notification icon things for a notification of future videos anyway i'm out of here right now so i'm david harry thank you very much for watching this video take care and goodbye now.